For the ceiling. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Prince Mandingo. That was it. Okay. That was it. That so was the, and the name the name came from uh Wait, just, just keep that up there for a second. Let me take a picture of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my I'll send you the link. So you it's can... public. Listen, if you want joking. pictures, Dante will send you some pictures. You don't have to <laughs> you don't have to sneak nothing. You don't gotta be bootlegging I'm anything. I'm afraid to ask. No, for no, no, it's too late. It's they're already there. <laughs> no, you got no. a whole pot. In fact, there's a 38 by 61 on the way to your house right yeah. now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, uh, we have healer, witch, and herbalist, Senyata Amen. She's here to discuss women's boundaries, how to have a healthier sex life, the reason women are cautious men's fears of revealing health issues she also has a company where she sells herbal teas for male virility go check that out calabash tea um this is a real goodie yeah um, i mean we go into a lot of health stuff and, and bettering yourself both physically and mentally and we talk a lot about trauma and stuff too just the and we also talk about that on the patreon episode if you love the show and want to support us go over to patreon.com slash manschool202 and that's where you can sign up and uh, support us. We do all the bonus content over there and the listener mail. And uh, this week's episode, this bonus episode we do, we continue our conversation with Sun Sunyata uh, Amen as we discuss uh, not letting your fears control you and how to uh, examine what your value truly is. And it's a really good, it's a good one. And uh, it's patreon.com slash manschool202 if you want to support us. Also, uh, I do relationship consultations. If you want to email me at advice from Harry at gmail.com and we can set up some consultations there for you. And if you want to reach Dante uh, consultations, you can go to Dante Nero.com and click on consult. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up? Uh, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution's being podcasted, and I am excited. This is a special show. Now, I know I have said that 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. Um, nice. First and foremost, Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Uh, I was born ready to rock and roll. This is uh, about to go down. It is about to go. I can see the energy, the excitement you have. That I, I don't know the guest officially, but I already know there's something there that's interesting, and I'm excited uh, to find out myself. Uh, I'm doing great, just having a tough time keeping these gators down. That's the only problem. It is difficult. It is difficult. Here's the thing. Uh, you know I don't like people. Uh, <laughs> this has come up. This has come up. Yeah, you generally so when I, don't. When I have any level of excitement, you know that the person is usually pretty extraordinary. So um, I'm not going to say who we recorded with before, but you did not show remotely this level of excitement <laughs> for guest number one. And they didn't deserve it. They didn't. Deserve uh, it. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> they didn't. I'm um, talking shit. Uh, I want to introduce. Um, this young lady, uh, is amazing, amazing person, uh, healer, um, uh, consultant, health consultant, um, just all around uh, of the ancestors. I mean, uh, Dr. Sebi would be proud. Uh, <laughs> give, it, give it up, Senyata. Amen, oh, y'all. Give it up. What's up, sweetie? How are you? Hey, Dante, how you feeling? Hey, Harry. Hey, pleasure to meet you, Senyata. It is wonderful to meet you, too. I love how it's like from the ancestors, uh, that witch, uh, whatever. Her that <laughs> witch for, for with, for how. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's the best intro I've had in a long time. I'm glad. I'm glad I could have I could have facilitated. Now, um, so how you don't know that um, uh, Senyata does a herbal tea business and the healing business. So, uh, make long story short, she knows how to keep your dick hard. So <laughs> mm, nice. Okay. That's valuable information from the dawn of time. People have been trying to figure this out. I we, know. Uh, and, and all they had to do was just drink more tea. Imagine that. Or <laughs> ask you. All they had to do was ask you. Listen, where were you? At? Why you could have saved so many uh, endangered species with this information, Senyata. <laughs> Where well, were you they, instead of if, us cutting off rhino they, horns? I mean, if they didn't get their game together, then they deserve to become extinct. That That's, is that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm jokes, here. jokes. Yeah. Uh, but, but thank you for that. Um, 
you know, we have a long tradition of being steeped, no pun intended, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in uh, all the things that people want to do to be healthy. And above all things that people ask, there's two main areas of their lives that they're super interested in getting together. Mm -hmm. First, and in no particular order, (laughs) is their nervous system. They're like, my nerves are stressed. I need some sleep, that kind of thing, right? Right. And second one, sex. Yes. Yeah. These are the top two, three, four, and five. Four. Wow. Okay. So, so you're saying you're saying uh, first by a lot, by a big lead. It wasn't close. It was a sweep. Sweep. Total yeah. sweep. I mean, your your anxiety made it into the finals, but it got it got swept by by the question of sex. Yeah. So, you know why? Because it it causes anxiety when people are not performing well, and then you're not performing well, and then it could you know, and then the anxiety. So it's like this weird spiral that we. Well, go it on. don't help. It can't help. Nobody wants to be anxious and soft. That's not going to help. You got to pick a struggle. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know? Here's, here's the other thing. I, I just saw this documentary on the exploration of, of great sex. And they were saying how great sex and orgasm releases uh, internal cannabinoids into yeah. the blood system. Yes. And euphoria. And so. Can you talk about how how important it is to have a healthy sex life and what that looks like? Yeah, it's super important. Um, You know, all jokes aside, you know, the the nervous system, uh, sexual relationship is is super tight. And if we have we hope so. (laughs) (laughs) And if we don't have those euphoric, as you mentioned, um, moments in our existence caused by laughter, caused by sex. Caused by, so this show is perfect, right? Like right, uh, right. Uh, all those things that help us release endorphins, um, just feel happier in life in general, then we have those problems. So it's incredibly important. And that's probably why a lot of people uh, use sex to go to sleep. You know, mm-hmm. becomes a release for a lot of folks. Like, okay, let me rub one out before right. I go to bed, and it and it does increase the ability for you to sleep because you are now in this super relaxed state. I mean, nature set it up right. right. Like after you have sex, you just got to knock out. After right. that, it increases the chances of uh, the species becoming pregnant or you know whatever the case is. So definitely, that's a thing. Uh, very important. So I'm glad you watched this documentary. I feel like I need to write this down. <laughs> <laughs> and we, I, I will, we'll, we'll get it. There's, a, there's two that I'm watching right now because I'm, I'm actually writing. I'm working on my book. Uh huh. So uh, my book is called. It's going to be called Forty Eight Laws of Pussy. So it's going to be <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Only so, 48. <laughs> exactly. Only 48. So well, that's the um, first volume. It's the first volume. It's first gonna volume. be this is we're gonna we gotta reprint it a couple of times. You ever it's... see a hard copy of War and Peace? You know how big it is? Yeah, that's what this is gonna be. It's we're, very I'm gonna long. do it like the old encyclopedias we would have. Oh, you know like a wall, the... <laughs> like a whole wall, like a whole shelf. Dante's got Dante's gonna have like a legal office. You ever see those commercials where they're like, Do you or anyone you know suffer from mesophilioma? Right. And then they then they're on that ladder with the big legal books in the back of them. That's yeah. what that's what it's gonna look like when Dante's done. That's how is many done. laws there are. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like well, it. let me give you a little background of the show too, Senyata. So um the show started out as as kind of a way of guys not understanding the social dynamics of 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 um of intimacy and women and stuff like that it's a male centric kind of audience but there's a lot of women that listen as well um because they want to you know they want to know what we're talking about and um so i mean I, so and i don't know i know senyata through karen and stuff but uh my my previous job, I was a male stripper for many years and dealing with women and dealing with women at that because of what I was, you know, because I was on the other side of it. You know how women are objectified and stuff. I I got I got treated like a piece of meat. It was just so hard. Are you complaining about that? <laughs> no, no, that just, it was so hard. Um, 
But, you know, having that perspective and, and to see the perspective on the other side, the other thing is that there was a lot of women who I dealt with felt as though there was no agency over them because of what I did for a living. Okay. So if there was anything that they were hung up about or whatever, so, you know, it wasn't uncommon. It was like, oh, could you pee on me? And I'm like, I, I'm, it, I yeah, I guess. If you, <laughs> so, because Dante was out there making dreams come true. Dante <laughs> was like an adult woman's make a wish foundation. But it was, it also Dante. was kind of mean because they were like, well, who are you to judge me? I can ask you because you can't judge me. And so right. for most of my. Did it ever bother you, Dante, a little bit where you're like, hey, Jesus. Yeah, it did. It OK. Did. It, it, At it, some it, point, it, Dante's this... like, you know, maybe I don't want to pee on you. Maybe I already went. That's... <laughs> well, stay well, stay it, hydrated. You got to you stay know. hydrated in these streets. <laughs> there it is. There it is. They um. Uh, but what ha what happens is, you know, we 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 judge our deficiencies by mm -hmm. what we don't have, not by what we do have. And so it wasn't really difficult for me to, to have sex or to get some because I was I was out in these streets every day shaking my money maker and, and it was <laughs> I was advertising. And so but the the problem was. The intimacy involved right. because, right. You, you know, you didn't you didn't that wasn't at least that wasn't the prerequisite for women. And, you know, they saw me as this object and they were like, OK, I want a slice of that. And that was just the thought. So it's 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 an interesting thing because anybody could tell somebody by if if they slept with me or not, because they would call me Dante and they wouldn't call me Mandingo, right? <laughs> if they, if they didn't call wait me, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was that your, that was your gnome de plume? Yeah, that was, were? that was, it was Prince uh, Mandingo. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. How did you choose that? How did you come about that? So Harry, can you share the screen on my Instagram? Show her the picture. Let me try on to my, find it. Hold on. On my gram. It's on the bottom of my gram. I'm, I follow you on Instagram, but I feel like I didn't know that this was your. Yeah, I know. I know because I keep it professional. <laughs> that you were I didn't, that you were incognito. As... Yeah, well, well, I mean, I don't hide it because I, I'm a I, I, I really think honesty is important because, um, you know, we all get exposed. And I think we right. spend so much time, um, so much time hiding what the truth is, that the truth is so important. And um, if you if you tell the truth, then you don't have to worry about you're not putting on a mask every day. And I think right. uh, one of the things that I find is most important about relationships. One of the most attractive thing about any man is that he tells the truth. Right. Right. I, on a base level. And I say that to guys all the time. And, you know, young guys is. A lot of I get a lot of immigrants, guys who who first generation immigrants, because, you know, their parents are like, you go to school and I become an engineer. <laughs> and it's like there's no uh, pursuit of self-fulfillment or happiness. Gotcha. And so they're not telling you how the social dynamics and up there. And a lot of times they don't know. I mean, because they don't you know, don't come like I always say that my dad was born 1920. Mm -hmm. Um, and he grew up in Jim Crow. He was the youngest boy of 16. Uh, and 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 he was born 19. I had an aunt that was born in the in the in the um 1800s, 1890s, like my oldest aunt. Uh -huh. So when you think about the kind of trauma that they were under, you know, you, you we expect them to be great parents and we don't take into consideration the historical trauma that they were under at the time. And so you got to got to reconcile it. The other thing is that I, I ran it I, I, because of the strip and I ran an escort service. OK, OK. Now so we're getting to the meat of the matter. Well, yeah, well, work. I mean, we, we I'm always <laughs> at the meat. Of the matter, but, <laughs> See it. but um, and, it, and and I always say that it's not something that I'm proud of, but it was something I was young and and we're all imperfect human beings. Two things that will always, I say, two things that we'll always have to do is ask for forgiveness and give forgiveness. Part of being human. So, um, 
So I had both sides of that, managing that and being on the other side of it. And so my knowledge of it is, is just, you know, kind of watching the patterns and stuff like that. And so the principles of the podcast is ACE, which is authenticity, credibility, and then empathy. Got it. Telling like the truth, it. saying what you mean, meaning what you say, and then um, and then having the empathy to understand that somebody's going through is going through something that you're not going through and being able to kind of ask that. And so the health and wellness part of it mm-hmm. is part of it that I didn't have that I don't really have, which is why you're here. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, which I think the wellness part of it in in truth is. The part when we talk about the stress is because when you're a liar, you're always wearing these masks and trying to cover up. And so it brings stress because it's when am I going to be exposed for what I am? And so if you don't lie and you 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 also have to sit in what you are, however, however that is at whatever level, whether it's good or not. And then it's there's no magic there's no magic bullet to it. You got to put in the work to be better. If you want to, if you're a guy who's, you know, is, is doesn't converse well, you got to read a book. If you don't know how to dance, you got to take a dance class. If you're not in shape, you got to work out. And so th- it's a process of everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody don't want to die first. So, um, okay. Let me see here. If I could pull up this picture, hold on. You got to, can you share it? <laughs> I think so. Hold on. Let's see here. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Oh, okay. All <laughs> right. All right. Prince Mandingo. That was it. Okay. That was it. That so was the, and the name, the name came from uh Wait, just, just keep that up there for a second. Let me take a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my I'll gram, you the link. So you it's public. <laughs> Listen, if you want joking. pictures, Dante will send you some pictures. You don't have to <laughs> you don't have to sneak nothing. You don't gotta be bootlegging I'm anything. I'm afraid to ask. No, for no, no, it's too late. It's, they're already there. <laughs> no, you got a whole pile. In fact, there's a 38 by 61 on the way to your house right yeah. now. <laughs> no. Um well, I love it. That's quite that's um a get up and a half, man. Well, you it came, really it came from uh so the name came from the movie with Ken Norton uh Mandingo. Yeah. And and the costume came from I don't know if do you remember uh before there was series, epic series, there was Shaka Zulu. Remember? Of course, of course. Okay, do you remember when he walks when he reclaims the throne? Yeah. He walks and then everybody parts and then he and the, and he that's the outfit that um, I made that from that outfit. Right. Everybody knows that movie. Shaka. Yeah. Yeah, Chaka. <laughs> I'm your brother. No, no, no. <laughs> so, and, and it was like my my thinking at the time was I was I was younger, and mm-hmm. I have three sisters who are very different in terms of like my younger sister always she always dated really cute guys with great bodies, jocks, but they were dumb as shit. Um, <laughs> my middle sister always dated uh, average looking guys. Right. Really sweet, really romantic, but usually broke. And okay. and my oldest sister, my middle sister dated guys, flashy jewelry, cars, ugly, but and abusive. <laughs> oh man. That's those are quite some struggles. It's like, yeah. why can't you have the nice guy with the flashy car? Who's really sweet? Like we can't have all the things. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we gotta you gotta get a lamp for that. <laughs> but that was that was my intention as a as a young dude looking at those. I was like, wow, I mean, this is kind of weird. I was like, if I could be the guy that could fulfill all the good of those things. And and so that was my endeavor. And that's kind of where the show comes from, is this the pursuit of this complete person so yes. that you find that you're found attractive, that you understand what your value is, that when you when you step to a young lady and you, you have something to offer bec- and you're also, because you understand what your value, you're not w- willing to put up with the trash uh, because you can always leave and you have options if you do. Right. Leave. right. So this is what I have for you. I feel that you're worthy of this. You have to show me that you can receive this in a way that's respectable enough that, that I'm comfortable. With. And without that, but if you're a good, if you're, 
in shape and you're financially together, got you all of it together. You, you, you always have options, you know? Right. Absolutely. Um, but part of that is, you know, you gotta be good in bed. You gotta be, <laughs> pre- you gotta be present. You have to be present. You have to be yeah. physically aware of your body. You gotta be aware of your body. So if you could talk to us a little about some of the things, what, I, I know it has a lot to do with blood flow and stuff like that, the lack of anxiety, but could you talk about that a little bit? Blood flow is everything. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it makes the heart pump. It makes everything else happen, the brain, everything. I mean, you can't do anything without it. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that happens with a lot of us in a in a modern society is that our uh, sexual function and our capability of even having a libido that functions at a certain level is compromised because most of our resources are coursing through our body, like the blood, et cetera, going to other areas, right? Where it may not have been ordinarily. Mm -hmm. So eating late at night, our stomach is digesting all night. Um, If we are uh, deciding that we're going to be stressed out. We're worried. We're sitting a lot. We're in a car. We're doing, you know, all the things that are not really human behaviors ordinarily mm. outside of a modern structure. Our resources go there vitamins, minerals, all of that. That's why sometimes, like, you get sick, right? Like, we'll get sick if we get stressed or we'll get sick if there's just too much going on, is because, like, the vitamin C, the zinc, you know, the manganese, all of that is used up in those capacities. And then we see that the things we need for resources for sexual energy are not available to us because nature is like this. Nature says, I have to save the person, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have to save the person, sex is not Mm -hmm. necessary, right? right? It becomes a back burner issue. It's like, I need to save this person. The resources are needed for the eyes. It's needed for the brain. It's needed for the heart. It's needed. And so uh, we don't have anything to spare is the issue. Okay. So when we look at the behaviors of, let's say, the difference in like what Caribbean men do a lot, right? Like, so let's take Jamaican men or, you know, whatever, right? And, And talk about the fact that there is so much culture built around roots tonics and sea moss and mm-hmm. peanut punch. And I mean, you name it, right? You have right. to have a root man tonic. You have to have the yeah, peanut yeah. punch, the sea moss, the Irish yeah. mash, the this and that. Like every single thing that people are drinking or eating is somehow related to sexual prowess mm-hmm. or performance. Right. And that really reaches back to um, indigenous roots the importance of the whole person and that men and women taking pride in the way that they perform in every aspect of their existence. And so those modern lifestyles don't like get in the way of that stuff. Right. We're not, we're not eating McDonald's. We're not eating other things, you know, so the natural, the more natural, the food, uh, Jamaicans have a tea for everything. A tea right. for every single thing. You, it doesn't matter what happened to you. There will be a tea available <laughs> for that thing. Right. And also the um, the foods that contain high amounts of zinc, uh, high amounts of uh, minerals in general, and that really makes a difference in performance, especially for men. A huge difference. Okay. Um. So, say for instance. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what tea that would be, but like, say if you're taking this, I, and I understand that this is a holistic approach. Of we're talking about exercise, yep. healthy eating, and everything. But All of it. how how because it's a natural, you're not getting these spikes like your your Viagra, or whatever. You're not getting these blood spikes mm-hmm. and stuff because it's not synthetic. How quick after the, you start taking these teas do you start seeing a difference? Well, it depends, right? It's not just the teas. Let's be clear that these are herbal medicines, Mm -hmm. just like going to CVS. I mean, you wouldn't jump across the counter and just start downing tablets and pills. So in our indigenous cultures, you do go to, you know, your witch doctor or someone who's going to help you navigate those things, right? Mm -hmm. The 
the thing is that in the navigation of that, it's about pre- preventative medicine and practice. Right. Meaning people are taking this stuff all the all the time. Right. When you hear about roots man tonic, nobody's just going in and taking it as right. needed, like a Viagra. They're taking it like a vitamin, like every, every day. day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, every day. Or yeah. having CMOS every day, all of that. And so, of course, those constituents build on each other. So mm-hmm. you just have an overall healthier time of it. And so you don't have to get ready if you, you already stay ready, ready. Yeah, <laughs> right? I feel you. I yeah, feel you. stay ready. Um, the do you um did you diagnose it as well? And how and what are some of the some of the ways that you diagnose what's going on in a holistic way? Um, well, from indigenous medicinal standpoints, there are different things that could be happening, right? Like If a man, let's say, has um, erectile dysfunction, we're again talking about the blood. Something is keeping the blood from getting where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. If it's a physical issue, it could also be what we deem psycho-spiritual issue, right? Which in modern society may be called emotional, right? (laughs) But we would call it a psycho-spiritual issue, meaning there's some crisis of faith, like what you're mentioning, right? Like something's going on in, in the person's mind that's occupying them in a way that doesn't allow that energy to go toward the act of being intimate. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are two possible reasons. One is physical, one is psycho-spiritual, but in an indigenous standpoint, those go hand in hand. Something's wrong there. Something is disconnected. And we often talk about the heart, like something's going on that is heavy on this person's heart. And we'll just talk about men because that's what we're doing here at man school, right? Mm -hmm. Something's going on that's holding you from functioning the way that you need to function and first clearing the mind and getting that stuff off your heart is the first thing. And then taking the medicines that we talk about, like our herbals and, and high vitamin and high mineral substances is the next thing, right? We can't just seek to straighten out one thing. And you can't just override. And, Mm -hmm. and how do you, how do you, fix those or fix those spiritual things. And what is that? That's that person's journey. Mm -hmm. Um, There's nothing that I as a healer can do to fix that for them. Look, when people come into our place, um, the first thing we ask them is how can we help to heal you today? Right? Not Mm -hmm. what can I get you to drink or Mm -hmm. what am I, tea am I going to make you? Don't worry about all that. Right. How can I help to heal you today? Not how can I heal you? I'm not doing the healing. Right. I am the midwife. Yeah, yeah. I'm the midwife of right, the right. healing. My job is to connect you to the things that may be of assistance. And a lot of times people just, if they're clear, like, uh, we'll just look at each other and they'll just keep it real and say, you know, this is what's going on. I'm getting a divorce. I'm having trouble in my existence or, you know, I'm kind of lonely. I really want a partner and I, and I, it hasn't worked out that way. Or, you know, I'm running into this relationship and that relationship and nothing is really substantial and I'm getting tired of it. And I think my body's getting tired of it. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing how we'll just lock eyes and and people will bring really honest answers, and then that allows me to help. Okay, I, I mean, I mean that I think doesn't that come from your your honesty about it? Like there's a you know, like from the time that I met you, there's a there's a sincerity and an honest and an honesty and a just in your smile and your eyes. And just like the first time I met you, I was like, Oh wow. You, you know, like we, we hit it off immediately. Um, I, I think what I, so what we do on the show a lot of times is I, I, um, um, the anxiety of this, the anxiety, the expectations, these masculine expectations, not just, not just, uh, physically, you know, in the bedroom, but just the fact, I always say the two things that men are supposed to be good at with no practice is relationships and sex. Right. Um, And anything, I mean, how long have you been dealing with, you know, teas and healing and stuff like how did that, how did that journey start for you? 
That's a great question. Uh, I feel like I had no choice in the matter. Right. Uh, I'm a fifth generation herbalist, and my great grandmother was my teacher, who is a you know Cuban Jamaican woman, mm. and I spent a lot of time at her feet in Jamaica, and I saw a lot of what she was able to do to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents, my dad opened three different shops, three locations of an herbal juice bar kind of shop uh, mm -hmm. in Harlem, like a couple doors from the Apollo mm -hmm. and then up by the Schomburg and then one in Queens. And so I was the free labor in a lot of these places right, and right. I resented it entirely. Like right, I right. wasn't into this shit at all. Right, right. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I am never doing this job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you say. I will net. And then here I am. Okay. Here I am. I'm coming to you from inside of one of our locations <laughs> right now. So what go was to the show thing you. that what was the thing that changed that? Um, this is a great question. My grandmother, uh, not my great grandmother, who was one of my initial teachers, but my grandmother, who was another one of my teachers, said to me. As I was a teenager, I was in the house just feeling really pissed off that my cousins who were boys were outside. Meanwhile, I'm in the house learning how to cook stuff. You know, there are lessons there, though. Lots of those herbs that were used, especially when people are coming from other countries. I was a first generation born in this country. Mm -hmm. Like there are so many lessons of the magic and medicine of these herbs, mm -hmm. seasoning, spices. She told me, I must have been looking particularly sour one day. I was probably like 15 <laughs> and I was just pissed. Mm -hmm. And she leaned over to me and she said, you know, the people who control the food in the house control the people. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, why didn't you tell me this before? <laughs> that I could control the people in here by controlling the herbs and the food. <laughs> And she was like, yeah, you can make people sleepy. You can make your whole family go to sleep. You can make everybody laugh. You can make this and that. I was like, okay, I see where you're going. And so that was interesting. Right. Now, when I got to adulthood, uh, maybe I was about 25, 26. And I was in the kitchen again with her and we were making some things. And she elbowed me because I had gotten married at that point for the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for, it happens. She, yeah, it happens. You guys still together? No. <laughs> <laughs> he's, te he's teasing you. Oh, I was being a jerk. The fuck. You guys still together? <laughs> How's he doing? We're still friends. We're still <laughs> friends. <laughs> Sounds it. Anyway, sorry. Tell us. So, so you had so just got married. 25, 26. Let me explain. <laughs> Harry has a very dry humor that just slides in there. <laughs> I love it. I like it, Harry. I like it. So my grandmother elbowed me because I was a newlywed. And she said, you know, the fire in the kitchen makes the heat in the bedroom. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, you kept coming up with this stuff. Why are you holding out? So I started be to become more and more interested based on the fact that I could influence people, right? And that that influence was psycho-spiritual, you know, it's emotional, right? It's physical, all of it based on just having the understanding, the knowledge of ancient medicinal healing. And that includes the food. The food is a medicine. And right. especially for people who are uh, immigrant folk from lots of these kinds of places, you know, su subtropical, tropical regions, the things we put in there right. are intentional and medicinal every mm. time. Wow. So that's what got me interested. I was like, okay, I guess mm. I can be of help to someone instead of just a this. pain uh, in the ass. If so, <laughs> you didn't you didn't really immerse yourself like you didn't immerse yourself until after this after the first marriage, yes? Right. I went to school. I majored in biology. Oh, okay. uh, I went to graduate school and did graduate work in pathology, much like my dad. My dad's also a biologist and ethnobotanist. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, I went to med school, but it was that in-between time 
that mm-hmm. she told me this and it cha- it flipped a switch in my brain because of course she's talking about sex right, right so i'm right. like okay i'm interested right, right. and uh, <laughs> and then she's telling me i have the ability to help to influence and so what's better than like i can change your mind and i can teach you how to get it on like right. what's better <laughs> yeah 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 can i here's a question um if you knew now what you knew then, do you think you would still be married? Uh, to that person? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Well, because my, I asked because I, I think because my first marriage was mm-hmm. um, like I've learned so much from that that um, I, I believe uh, so. I don't know how you, how you, so, so what you're talking about is this power mm-hmm. that you have over people in, in terms of the food and what they're ingesting in terms well, to, of, to assist, to help, right. To help. But you also, you know, like, so, so my, my great grandmother was a old BI woman and she, she, Uh oh. You know, she, <laughs> she, Where was she, she from? Where was she from? Uh, she was from Antigua. Okay. So, okay. um, and then my on my on my mom's side is is uh Monican Sioux okay. uh, Sioux tribe. So, uh-huh. um, and they were from Virginia, and the, okay. you know they were like descendants of slaves, and then from from the Zuni Mountains, and so um, but um, what I start it's it, what's interesting now is even now I realize that my behavior or my response manipulates moves people I, I i guess for no other word than i can say mani- i mean it does manipulate people my intention is not negative but mm-hmm. my um well we can call it magnetic okay fair it's, enough it's ultra magnetic yeah. and there's nothing wrong with being magnetic this is how i get lots of folks apt to my reasoning right <laughs> Okay, Which I come from a like bunch of. <laughs> well, I get I come from a bunch of magnetic women and yeah. and men, and so um, you know, my dad's very magnetic. Ask my mom and his subsequent five wives, and I will say that. Uh, wow. That's some know, strong magnets right there. <laughs> That's those yes. industrial strength magnets. All right. <laughs> yes. Bye. Whenever people meet me, they're like, you look just like your dad. And man, you're a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I will say is that um, the ability to to heal people, it's laughter, it's any kind of performance. It's all performance to help people feel better. Mm-hmm. Right. You're not in the business of making people feel shitty. You're not like an insult, dude. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. Your job is really to help people come together. And honestly, laughter is probably the hardest elicited response of all human responses because people don't give it up easily. You know, it's not like crying where a movie can manipulate you to cry with the right music and scenes and editing. Well, Laughter it's, it's is organic. Well, uh, is, so this is my field of study. And so it's like, just how you like, we could just, well, we'll just mix this up. And we, it, uh-huh. it, there are, there are elements in laughter and the more resistant somebody is, when you, it, you have to be so self-aware of the person you're dealing like they give off so much. See, my problem is it, it, I won't say it's a problem, but um, and and Harry will testify to this. Because of doing comedy, I've been doing comedy 22 years. Mm-hmm. I can feel the energy in the room, I can feel what it is, and I and I know that there's I can say one thing. And then just flip the whole room around just with one phrase or one sentence. And, and I, I don't even know how I know it. I just know it, it, the answer just kind of, you know, just becomes so fluid in a sense. So it's it's I get how people say it's difficult, but it, it, it's when you do it. I mean, I've literally been doing it for 22 years. And so it just mm-hmm. becomes such a fluid thing. Um and and I would say is once you know, you know, and if you're aware of you, you have to have a, a, a certain level of self-awareness. You're your first patient. 
you know, right. <laughs> so even understanding where you're coming from, you understanding you helps you understand them. So like right. I do relationship consulting and, you know, I came from a situation where my father was super overbearing and you're going to, you're going to get hit by a car. You don't, don't go there. You're going to get killed. You're going to get shot. And he was like, you know, and so what happened was I grew up with a sense of fear about everything because he was, he was transferring that to me. Right. And I got to the point where I just got tired of being afraid. And so I, I was probably like 13 years old and I was just like, well, where, where does the fear exist? The fear exists for me. Um, this is a weird thing to think about at 13, but I was like, fear exists between the time that the opportunity is presented and how long you wait to access the opportunity. So, mm -hmm. so like, if you think about inertia, you know, that old inertia, you things yeah. that things that rest tend to stay at rest. Things more. So if you, if you, if you let that emotion sit, it sinks into the sand until it becomes immovable. So for instance, I was scared of girls and I was scared to ask a girl to dance. So I would be at the elementary school dance and I knew that I would, you know, I would see a girl that I wanted to and, uh, ask to dance and I wouldn't ask and I wouldn't ask. And the longer I would wait, the harder it would get. And then before you know it, the lights would be on and it'd be time to go. And I'd be like, ah, you know, and then I would be in my head for weeks. So what I would do was I would walk in the party. I'd come in with my friends. I'd see a girl uh, sitting in the corner, probably a little light-skinned girl with curly hair. No offense. <laughs> and I would run over to her. You want to dance? And she would go, yeah, okay. And I would, come on. And I would, oh, wait, let me put my coat down. So I wouldn't give it any time from the time I saw her. So as soon as the opportunity presented itself, I would access it, which was interesting because the subtext for her was that I knew I was very confident and that I knew what I wanted when it really, I was just fighting my own fear. And mm -hmm. so she, nine times out of 10, she would say yes, because she was like, well, he, he, you know, because we all sit in that insecurity. And so, because I was so forward and so honest about it, she would say yes, but then I would have to go put my code right. and then I'm, I'm in it. And so I started practicing that as soon as the opportunity presented itself, mm -hmm. I would access it. And so that's how I started overcoming the fear. So, but then what, what you realize is that everybody's insecure and everybody's yeah. afraid and everybody doesn't want to be rejected. And when you realize that, you realize, oh, wow, it's, it's, it's all, all I have to be is the one that's willing to take this, the first step. And right. nine times out of 10, you win in that, even more than that sometimes. So, yeah. so. It, you know, it looks like it's difficult, but when you practice it, it just becomes so it becomes so fluid. Your your attitude, your attitude, as soon as you find out, as soon as you feel their the, the audience's energy, there's a there's a, 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 a equal and opposite uh, response that changes that, that, that just it just fits like a puzzle piece. And then you say it and then the whole and then they just. Right. They let you go. So um, this the stress, what I found is the, the stress, especially from guys, is this the approach anxiety. Will I get rejected? What's she going to say? I'm not good enough. She's too pretty. Um, she's not pretty. I'm not good looking enough. I don't have money. I don't have a car. There's, all of this is going on. And the longer those things be, Persist, are in your yeah. head, it, the, that boulder sinks into the sand and then it becomes yeah. immovable. Right. Um, and so I, so I have a plan where I teach guys how to oh, deal nice. with that. With, I like that. With the, just to deal with the anxiety. And one of the, one of the things I say is what I do is, is it's called lay the five bricks, meaning every day you go out, you pay a compliment to five women a day, every day, not just the ones you want to have sex with old ladies, the lady at the cashier, nothing sexual, right? Yeah. Nothing sexual and nothing and um nothing sexual and it has to be truthful. Okay. It has to be honest. So I wonder if, if I wonder if I've met any of the people that 
you advise you this. probably you I, they, you know they're, they're out there they're, they're out there so they'll go they'll go ah, i love your glasses i'm wondering if yeah, these yeah. compliments have been elicited by your uh, it, consultation. I prob- I, i've been doing this how long we've we been doing this harry 10 years 10 years now yeah Courtesy well, of the man school. <laughs> and, it's and, plausible. It's very plausible. And the thing about it is that um, the, the, the intention is not to have sex with you. The intention is not even to elicit a response. Mm-hmm. The intention is just, I see something beautiful and I am speaking yeah. on it okay. because I'm confident enough to speak on it and it doesn't, I'm not even look, I, and I tell them not to, you're not trying to get a number. You're not trying to get a response. I just want a sincere compliment about something that you observe. If you look at this woman and you can't find anything to, to <laughs> then don't say anything. Then what? Has, then what? To, don't say anything. Right. So no, okay. but the exercise is you got to find something within the person. Now you, you have to examine and go deep because there should be yeah. something about everybody that you can find to talk about or that you can like. Yeah, you know. everybody has something to offer. But mm-hmm. what happens is women are so because it's it's built because it 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 your intuition is built into your safety. Like you have to recognize if somebody's creepy or or dangerous. <laughs> or yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had a level of all of those in my lifetime. I understand like all women. That's that's the first thing is like, okay, what are we doing here? Yeah, exactly. This is <laughs> this is and so, that that deals with the empathetic side of it. Is to to empathize with that women are in a situation where death and rape is on the menu. It's real. Them yeah. In every interaction. And so if I'm going to approach you, if I, yo, what's up? You got to like your ass and then you don't respond. And I go, fuck you, bitch. You're like you, you, this, yeah. where's the empathy and understanding that this woman is, she's, she's navigating safety through all of this. And then you don't know what she, you don't know if her mom died. You don't know if her dog died. You don't, you know, if she's, if she's on her month, you, you have no idea what she's going through. So the, the 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 intention is honest, open and and truthful without looking for something in return. In return. Yeah. Senora, you know what's I'm uh-huh. sorry. Go no, go for it. Go for it. You had something to well, say. Well, I was gonna say what's interesting about that comes back to our conversation. You know, what you're asking people to do is not is not sexual, what you're asking these men to do. Yeah. And What's interesting about that, that comes back to the beginning of the conversation when you were asking me about uh, performance, when we do talk about sex, a lot of the anxiety can get taken out of that. When we talked about uh, that psycho-spiritual connection. That's why I was saying, yeah. Absolutely. We're talking about how if, if folks, that heart energy, that heart chakra, right, is locked and closed down, then we say from an indigenous perspective that any anything that goes on downstairs below that heart can't yeah. be good. It right. can't yeah. be good because the person's heart is so tight and locked that the only thing they're going to do is end up having a heart attack. Like right. in right. terms of the blood being able to flow in terms of their energy, because that's chi, right? Their, right. their energy is stagnant because they don't want to open their heart. And I love the exercise that you're talking about because It doesn't presuppose that everyone we're going to be intimate with, we're going to be in love with, but it does presuppose that we are all in community with each other. There's humanity in it. Absolutely. There's humanity there. And the more men do those exercises that you are uh, really pushing forward, and this is novel, um, the more they're going to get better in their relationships with people in general and their sexual performance Mm -hmm. and just their feeling masculine and manly without any toxicity attached to it. And that is super important. Yeah. So I love that you're doing that. Yeah. Sunyata, this information that you have, this knowledge that you have, how has that affected your, your dating life? How has that affected your relationships? Uh, You know, I, I think I would want to say that the number one thing is being true to oneself. Like you were saying earlier, Dante, uh, you have to know what it is that you need and be very straightforward about it 
Or what ends up happening is that you're living in this myriad of untruths and nobody's happy. Look, you know, if every year, let's just say every year that we're given is a chapter, Mm -hmm. you know, in a book, how are you going to live out these? I don't know. How many do you get? 80 chapters, you know, or whatever it is. How many? Yeah. If you're lucky. And then how many have you gone through already? And how has that been looking like when you look back on it? And then what are you going to do with the next Mm -hmm. 30 or 40 or however old you are? Right. And so in the capacity of the first marriage that I mentioned, great guy. We're still friends. I just recognize, you know, I need somebody who's a little more ambitious. Mm -hmm. And this didn't mean he was a terrible person. I mean, just an amazing person. Just I knew it wasn't a great fit for me. And he deserved to have someone who was into him. He really did. Just the nicest guy. I want to. And you weren't. I wasn't. I was into him in the ways that I was. But then I was like, you know what? Mm. He needs someone who's who's not going to look at him and be like, I need you to want more for yourself. (laughs) Right. 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 And because it's okay. It's it's interesting because of what my personal experience is. And they look at me as men, the stripper and this and and I'll get guys who, who, who I'll do consultations with. And they'll be like, look, you know. I don't want threesomes and I don't want to go to the, and I'll go. It, I, all I, I just want you to understand what your happiness. And then I want to help you facilitate the journey to your happy, whatever that is. Even right. if it is, if it's polyaramis and you want to be in a bed with two women, you can have that. You just can't have that with everybody. Every, right. every, it, there's, there's women who want to share a dude because they don't want to be bothered as much. You know yeah. I mean? Too much, too many socks to wash. Yeah. It's <laughs> if you if you got a full time guy, they're like, I don't want to do all that. Right. And, and yeah, you know, and that's these, fair. These are choices. Everybody should just be very clear about what they want and then move on that mission, right? right. So that we're not living these untruths that then affect us physically. Um, you know, we say in traditional medicine that. When you're having a physical ailment, it's because something else is troubling you. It's Mm. the physical manifestation of something else from on high, right? This is something that's bothering you in your mind, something that's preoccupying you, something you haven't paid attention to that Mm. you knew you should have. I mean, you knew you had a toothache. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now you now you you run into you didn't pay them tickets. You right. Know, they get ready to tow your car. You know. Well, you walk outside and it's gone, and you're like, I wonder yeah. it's got stolen. It yeah. didn't get stolen. You yeah. stole it yeah. from yourself. But there's, there's a literal, literally the honesty of that. I mean, right. not just the honesty with other people, but the honesty with yourself is like the like I said, if your first patient is you, you gotta you, you gotta be. You got to be honest with yourself about what you're doing and what what you're not. And, you know, I, I, you know, you got to, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to be so brutally honest that I'm mean. But if you ask me, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Not just because I owe it to you, but because I owe it to me. Because the minute I start lying, even if I lie to, to spare your feelings, it's still a lie. And it brings that that intent. It 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 disrupts. Well, it's how my you intent. deliver it, right? It's all about how you deliver it. You know. And if it's delivered in love, just like the compliments that you're talking okay. about are delivered in love. Yeah. Uh, if those truths are delivered in love and not not totally softened out, like you're right. lying, but but just in love, like hey, you know, I I would love for you honesty. To, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just honest. Uh, There are ways I can be better and I just want us to, but, you know, it's not going to work out the way it is, Mm -hmm. but here it is. And those kind of truths bring you to a higher part of yourself that is more healed, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's a, that's a beautiful way to go. And I I love that you're helping cats, you know, get themselves together with that because this society does not encourage that level of honesty. The number of times I've had people come in men and, and they say, um, well, I don't need any men's tonic. You know, I'm great in that department. I'm thinking to myself, you really not. I can see right I can now. See <laughs> I already Why see you here? not great you in here? this department. Right. I just want to. I just want to throw. Uh, I just want to throw darts better. Just a little yeah. straighter. <laughs> I, uh, my handwriting could use a little work. You got anything for that? 
<laughs> well, the fact that it's darts it's a, and it's a pen, I yeah, would yeah. say there's a lot of phallic imagery yeah. in that. <laughs> I'm trying to play the flute better. You got anything? You got, you got I want to play the tuba. Yeah. <laughs> so really, when it comes to that, I already know what they're dealing with because they're yelling that out loud. And oh, no, I don't need it's like, brother, t- get simmer down. Oh, I didn't get loud with you. You don't have to. You know, there's no nobody's questioning your your you think, right. your virility. You think part of it is that you're a woman. So it's a little bit hard for them to be like, yeah, it ain't where, you know. Like, um, uh, like they come in there, you're, you're, you're wearing your, your hat, your glasses. Yeah, and you a cutie too. So she's a cutie. smiling and eyes, her, she, her eyes is blinking. She, she's bl- <laughs> blink, man. They, so that, I'm, yeah, good, I'm good with that. And listen, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm fine. Want none. You don't but, want none, do you? I'm going to tell you this. A friend Very of mine with the same men. build. Uh-huh. Uh, and the same uh, the same haircut as I do, he might need some tea. What would you recommend for him? <laughs> Uh, well, we do have a men's tonic and I, and I really like it because I like to use those kind of traditional herbs that hon- horny goat weed, which of course it sounds amazing, right? Like I like to use saw palmetto. I like, you know why? Because I really want the front end that's performing great. Mm-hmm. I want the back end to be great too. I want that prostate well, nice. Saw palmettos for the prostate, right? Absolutely. Heard, yeah. I want that back end and that front end because the back end is the front end lifter. If that yeah. back end is not working, baby, you could forget it because you need it's four wheel drive. Else- <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, right. it does. And so I'm a I'm a huge proponent of making sure that all of those things are in working order. When I went to med school, they told me that. You know, I had a had a white male teacher who said, look, if a if a black man a, over the age of 55 comes in your office, he's going to have prostate cancer more than likely. You know, there's going to be get the, be the yeah. beginnings of it or it's yeah. already manifest. And if over 60, forget about it. And I just thought, wow, really? That's yeah. that's what we're teaching people yeah. and specifically race related. So there's just a, a washing of the hands with regard to men and their sexuality. And it just doesn't make sense. So to me, I was like, you know what? If a man comes in, wants to perform well in the bedroom, let me go ahead and give him the medicine that is for the unseen on the backside. Too. Right, 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 right. <laughs> now, yeah. these these are tonics that you created on your own and manufactured and created on your own. Can you, I mean, we're going to do uh, some behind the scenes, behind the paywall in a little bit. But I, before we do that, I want you to, the, the regular listenership, I'd like you to some of the some of the products that you think you're so about, you know, your organization, your business and everything so that they can get stuff from you. I, I'd, I'd like to take that last five minutes of this before we go over there. Oh, that's really sweet. I mean, I'm just happy to be here. No, you know, no, but this is we're you know. those we're those servants. We're just happy to serve. But I really do um, like that men's tonic. I think it's an opportunity for men to put something in their pocket. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> that's in a that's in a spray form, right? Okay. Uh, here we go. There's a bunch of them up here. Okay. Um, that gives them the opportunity to. I don't know. It's a little shiny there. There, we there go. you go. Men's power. Men's power. Okay. Um, so they're just going to use it in the mouth, and this is a distillation of a lot of herbs that would have been in a tea. And mm. the reason I like this for men in particular because we have tons of teas in here. Um, We have a whole warehouse and factory that we do all of our stuff up the street, right? Mm -hmm. It's because I find that men tend not to be compliant. We don't want to sip sip a tea. No. Well, no, men do. They like tea. They like tea, but they're often on the move. They're on the go. Right, 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 right. So men in this culture, in the in American society, tend not to have been taught to care for themselves that way. You go to the Caribbean, men are having a cup of tea all day. Whatever yeah. tea they're drinking, they're drinking roots tonic. They're drinking, you know what it is, Dante. Yeah, you know sure, the deal. You have sure. you come from Caribbean roots. Yeah, they make run, time. Run, but we're here, this this Eurocentric I we right. we're on the run. It's funny because like when I tell guys to like Harry, Harry was like one of my first dudes. And I took Harry to his tailor, to his first tailor. Right. Yeah. Oh, nice. And now Harry can't wear a pair of jeans. I will not. I'm bitch. not an animal for like God's he, sake. What am I, a savage? <laughs> I'm a barbarian? <laughs> because once you feel that self-care. Right. You know, you, you at first. It's you're a one-way it street. Look, 
It's a one way yeah. street. You can't go yeah. back. And once yeah. we start taking care of ourselves and my, my fondest wish, because I'm very fa- fond of men, I am uh, always wanting them to function better. <laughs> and right. I'm yeah. wanting, because I'm also fond of their community. And the more yeah. that men are settled, they, the more they feel confident and aware. And just like the consultations you're giving folks and the advice the better the community gets in general. We can't just always improve women. I mean, there's a million teas for women and this for women and face cream for women and whatever. It's like, what about men? Like we need to love up on you guys and show you how to love up on yourself. One of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm like, like you can always women women will ask advice. They women will ask for directions. They don't, they don't find that to to defeminize them, whereas men don't ask for directions until it's already in the shitter. It's already, <laughs> you know, you lost in the desert with one spring bottle. So, <laughs> and you really have to fix relationships from the masculine side because a woman a lot is a reflection of the guy that she's dealing with because she she, she women tend to be a little more malleable. And, yeah. and then they they morph, which is why when you find when you get a man and you feel like he's he's not better than you, right. like and I mean like, better is a relative term. It's like why you left your first husband. It's like you, I don't. I mean, for lack of a better word, it's like I don't respect you. Like I need you to lift okay. me up so that I can feel safe. So I will say this, I definitely regarded him. I respected him for who, who he was. Right. Um, I went and spoke to my mother and mm. I said, I, you know, I, I laid out some stuff and she said, I blame you. <laughs> and I said, why? And she said, how could you, a total bookworm, be involved with somebody who doesn't like to read? Yeah. Or how could you be involved with somebody as ambitious as you are with somebody who doesn't have that He's level? Not ambitious. She's yeah. like, I blame you. He didn't know any better. <laughs> like he looked at you and he's like, this is great. So yeah, but I, it's also, I had I, to take I had to take accountability is what I'm saying. Well, I and also, I also I tell guys to, anytime it doesn't work, it's the guy's fault. Because and the I, won't, why, I won't say that he was great. Look, no, I, and I don't mean that. He's not, out, I don't mean it like that. What I mean is. You have to understand what you're what you have to give. And it's your because when it's because we we you know like women we, I always say uh women fake orgasms, men fake relationships. <laughs> you know, they yeah, that's, you, you that's... know they will become whatever they have to become to get the girl right. and then not do the things it takes to keep the girl and or not even recognize what those things are. And because there's no way he was giving that, I don't want to do nothing energy when you met him. That, that just that, you know, either that or you just didn't look at it. You know, I, I'm going to honestly say it was my fault. Okay. I didn't look at it. Fair enough. I didn't okay. look at it. He was he was great in all the the, the other departments. Wink, wink. Yeah, yeah. And I. And, and so I was like, OK, yeah, I, can, I can work with this. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I, I mean, it works. <laughs> I like to hang out in the bookstore and I'm a comic book nerd. He's not. All right. We can work it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we cannot work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Senyata, what's the, the company? Please plug the company and whatever you uh, want. Uh, our place is called Calabash. C-A-L-A-B-A-S-H. Calabash T. And we're here in Washington, D.C., but, you know, we ship all over the country and that's always fun to be able to connect to folks. And if people go on our website, we have a little chat bot. So if they need something for a particular health concern, they can ask and my staff who's been trained will answer. And if they can't, then they'll ask me. And that's always nice. Let me ask you something real quick. Um, Dyslexia. What do you got for that? Just reading more like there's. (laughs) That's nothing. Is there a T to kind of, because you know, they do. Nothing. Well, here's the thing, which is very interesting. Um, all jokes aside, uh, I did a podcast a couple of days ago about the heal, the magic and healing, you know, medicinal properties of certain culinary herbs. Mm. And one of the ones I spoke about was rosemary and rosemary in recent studies 
has been shown to increase brain function by about 200%. Like just rubbing it and smelling it before an exam, um, rubbing it and smelling it before classwork uh, increases students' ability to retain information. And this is people who didn't necessarily even believe in it, right? But this is these students. So it was a good a good uh, set good of study. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm asking for Harry because Harry has dyslexic and he, you know, they... I have dyslexia and ADD. Yeah, like the, the you might find that the rosemary really helps. And we have a tea called Get My Mind Right, which I really, really like uh, with regard to just mm. getting the brain fog and being a little more focused uh, that that's there, uh, you know, that the things that happen within our course of community where we're all different, neurally different, you know, I I don't like neurodivergent. I just like that we're, we function differently. Mm -hmm. Every single person, you know, my great grandmother taught me that every person has a medicine to bring to a village. Mm -hmm. So Harry has his medicine. He's bringing to the village. Dante, you have yours, me. I don't know. The jury's out, (laughs) but, (laughs) but we all have our gifts that we bring to a village and brains that work a little differently than others, Mm -hmm. man, that's magical. Like there's something there always with someone else. So Harry, what's your gift coming out of having dyslexia? Uh, It's not so much the dyslexia, but with the ADD, my mind has to move at a lot of different places. And so that's helped out in comedy or my lack of attention is usually I find interesting. I pay attention to weird things and that's where the comedy is. Like when I watch, like, See, you know, you watch right. a concert or somebody's doing a solo. Anytime somebody does, does a solo, like a saxophone solo or something, mm-hmm. my eyes start drifting to the back to go, well, what's the bass player doing? Cause he's not doing anything <laughs> right now. Or what's the, what's the clarinet play? She's not doing anything. Yeah. So I start watching. I like watching like people who serve the tip, that type of stuff. And the that detail, the details of it and that See, that's, that that's a gift everybody yeah, it is has a gift. that medicine and that's a medicine you have to bring to the village so when people are critical of someone like oh they have add they have AD, or they throw these terms around loosely they don't understand that that person has a gift and you know we can't have community without all of that and everyone mm-hmm. so calabash tea um get your stuff there fellas uh harry talk to me real quick <laughs> Uh, you can follow me on all my social media at Harry Turjanian. That's where uh, I'm at. Uh, all my stuff there. And if you want to do relationship consultations, you can uh, email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Um, you can check me out, DanteNero.com. Social media, you know, Google me, uh, The Dante Nero. All the Facebook, all the stuff. Y'all know how to get me. Uh, consultations, DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You can get me direct. Don't forget to follow the Patreon www.patreon.com slash manschool202 GYBB get your balls back WWDD what would Dante do uh, sexual revolution is being podcasted I love y'all check us out on the Patreon side we're gonna do a little extra digging a little deeper and um, check y'all there love y'all <laughs>